Yeah, hometown, yeah. right? Same hometown. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I got kind of meta there. <laughs> All right, let's say you're a data scientist working for Facebook. The product manager has asked you to develop a method to match users to their siblings on Facebook. How would you evaluate a method or algorithm to match users with their siblings? So I'm assuming this means that there's not that option where you can choose who who is your family. How about let's say that you can, but we want to actually match users with their siblings for the people that haven't done it. Okay. So and we like, have some so of this existing. We could suggest data. like, hey, is this your sibling? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So just thinking of the metrics I would use, I'd probably look at their names, like their last name. That would probably be a pretty obvious one. But let's assume we didn't have that. I think we could still do it. Well, that might be a pretty important one. But we'd look <laughs> at, because um, there could be people with the same last name that aren't siblings, like Johnson. Yep. So probably a ton. there probably are a ton. Yeah. So can I use their facial recognition stuff? Uh, no. Yeah, okay. I think that one. Because I would say it. that could be a component that could help like add, but it might be too easy. So I would maybe look at messages between users um, and see if they reference family members. Like if a comment says, doesn't mom look great in this dress, like referring to some other user. So probably like that's a whole model in itself, but doing a text analysis to see, you know, do two users talk to each other as as if they have common relatives that could yeah. associate their siblings. What um, if we thought about like the lowest hanging fruit, just like off the bat. So like to me, one example would be like, let's say that they're friends on Facebook and they have the last name that probably narrows down our set. Oh, that they're friends. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. Just and like, do they live in the same city? Yeah. Hometown, yeah. right? Same hometown. Okay. Yeah. I guess I got kind of, meta there <laughs> uh <laughs> did they go to the same schools because i think there's like yep. the record of school history it'd be interesting to know like a distribution of how often they interact with a sibling versus interact with other people like you may interact less with a sibling on facebook than you do with other people because you see them if you're living together you see them in real life or not i, I would i would follow i would like do some eda there to see like you know is there any variation in like how family members communicate on Facebook versus friends. That's a good, yeah. So we would basically use the existing data that we have, right? And model out that relationship and exactly. see if we can apply that in the future, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's say that we basically have some sort of like cobbled together model out of all these heuristics and we start deploying it out into production, right? For um, users to actually start using for the like suggesting siblings. So the basically Facebook, next time you log in, they're like, is this your sibling? And then it's like five potential siblings, right? Uh, now, how do we like make our model better? Because we've like thrown it out there and we have an idea of like, you know, what it can do. What do we do now? Uh, so now we've got a chance to evaluate it with comparing our predictions versus the actual results. So I'm guessing there's probably going to be a subset of people that don't answer. <laughs> but if they have to choose, um, you know, we're going to see how many of, of this number of the group of people we suggested to this person, how many were correct. And we can use that to like train the model again with a new validation set. Yeah. I'm trying to think of how we, how I do that. So it'd be almost just like live test train split if we if we didn't have historical data. So we'd be basically, I imagine like we would be suggesting it based on some sort of clustering or unsupervised learning. Yeah. Using the input to then turn that into, I guess I'm seeing it as like we're deploying an unsupervised model using user feedback to label our data for us in order to then have a a more robust model to train later. Okay. So like That's assuming true. we don't have labeled data, the users yeah. label it for us when we when we surface suggestions. Yes, gotcha. And that's only based off of our prior suggestions, right? Because it's like it's not like they're choosing between, you know, five completely random people in the entire world, right? They're choosing between five of our like suggested predictions already. And so yeah. that would be the training set that would kind of feed back into this new classifier again, would right. be like our unsupervised models outputs, right? 
Yeah. But we also do kind of know that we do have existing data on like people who were matching each other as friends. There's this other question of like, is there an actual classified data set within that like existing list that we could still use? Like we know what the ones are. We know all the matches that are ones, right? Because those are like, like, you know, me and Andrew, we said we were brothers basically, and we have that linkage, but we don't know any zeros, right? Because we never like, it's not like we previously, let's say ever suggested any siblings to uh, the new user because we never built this model before. How would you generate like zero samples to build your model at that point? Would it be like just random people or like, what would we do there? So zero samples being confirmed, not siblings. Yes. Yeah. Confirmed, not siblings. Did we just take two random people and we just put them together and be like, here, here's a zero sample. Well, oh, I God. guess we could sort of a B test it and give people five. If we're giving you, let's say we give people three, we surface three people to them. Are these your siblings? We could do that with three people. We are pretty sure aren't siblings and say, are these your siblings? And if that would be a confirmed no, purposefully give wrong ones. So not just randomly give connections, but like go to the other end of our model and say, these two are way far apart. Like we're definitely sure they're not siblings. Let's confirm that. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea. And then as we train this model and as we get better and better, what continual metrics might we use? And I guess this is more like lastly, like what why would we want to basically build out this classifier to begin with? And I know this is something we should have talked about in the beginning, but I guess like in the long scheme of things, like if we're talking about clarifying kind of our structure around why we're building this, like what might be a few reasons why we're building like this model? So sort of like a business use case. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, the goal of all of these companies would probably be to increase engagement. If the broader goal is to get you to use the software more, or the platform more than maybe like being able to reliably connect with family members would be a way to get you coming back more often. So like, it's not just you're out there finding your own people, you know, you're using a platform that does a lot of that part for you. So I'm, I'm like, you know, you could say like, oh, maybe it's finding a long lost relative that you never knew, but like, that's yeah. not the way we train the model. So like, that's not really the use case. I think it's to like make a software that encourages connections, which then encourages more engagement. There is that aspect of like, we're assuming that, you know, if you're connected with your siblings, generally that would be helpful towards your engagement on the platform. I think, you know, Facebook has probably run tests before in the past on like whether connecting with their parents is better towards Facebook for your general engagement. But at the same time, I think there's also this idea of like creating out that user network and a lot of that is probably connected like if you match on siblings you're probably matching to this entire group of other friends that they have and so siblings might just be like a super easy high level one right. to get out of the way first and then after that they can show you all these other friends that are probably maybe it improves models down the road for suggesting other friends yeah true. whereas siblings are just like the easy one up front 